good. Let's speak to a commentator, uh, Mal Fletcher, on this morning. Mal, um, this is such an interesting one, the idea that it, once somebody's died, you know, live and let live or whatever. But that's not fair, of course, on those who still have issues outstanding that they don't have. It almost takes away that right of reply. Should we let the dead rest in peace, though? Well, good morning, David. Look, it is an ethical minefield, isn't it? And I'm not a professional ethicist, but it seems to me there are at least two very important questions for all of us out of this. First one you've touched on, are we right to consider allegations like these when the alleged offender is no longer with us? And secondly, can we separate the artist from their personal behaviour in terms of our appreciation of their work? I think on the first question, um, Michael Jackson may not be around to answer the claims, but justice should be served anyway, as far as that is possible. Um, but we shouldn't approach this as an exercise in vindictiveness. We should do it with a desire to prevent similar activities in the future, if indeed they occurred. If there was wrongdoing, we have to learn it. We have to move forward. I think it's a shame that if the allegations are correct, Mr Jackson isn't here to have the opportunity to at least reform. Had that happened, I think he might have become an even greater figure in the eyes of some people, and his, his last years might have been quite redemptive. But the point you made that justice should be served, that's the big issue here, isn't it, really? That gets to the cru crux of what I'm asking this hour. Justice just can't, it never can be served because justice is predicated on, on the idea of innocent until proven guilty. You can never prove him guilty because he's not here. Well, yes, well, there are many historical figures, though, that we've had to make judgments about after they're gone because we didn't fully know the full extent of their behaviour when they were here. People may have suspected things, but until they're gone, we find out the truth and then we form uh, our more rounded judgment. I think at the end of the day, it is the testimony of young men like these that would have formed the greater part of the evidence against Michael Jackson if he was with us. And we know that he denied these types of actions in the past. So in a sense, we have to ask, can we rely on the victims? I can't see anything they gain in making these claims at the moment, except a lot of vitriol and abuse from Michael Jackson fans around the world. And I think we have to then decide uh, whether the claims are consistent with what we already know about other aspects of Mr. Jackson's behaviour. And in, in the total thing, I think the big lesson is celebrity is no guarantee of integrity. And potentially, we don't know whether these allegations are completely true, but the talent is no substitute for character. And we ought to have seen signs when we, as you mentioned a moment ago, uh, or the maker of the documentary mentioned, there were instances where Michael Jackson was known to have young boys staying overnight with him frequently. And there's a failure there, isn't there, on so many levels of those who were around Michael Jackson, Jackson pandering to his every need and to all of his whims or whatever they might have been, and also the parents of these boys as well. You do have to ask, what were they thinking? I agree, totally. And uh, there is a responsibility there, and one that was obviously lacking at the time. Um, I think socially, on the, you know, there, there is this cultural acculturation towards celebrity at the time. I think it's gotten better now, but where people were more inclined to be trusting of those in the public eye. And we saw after the conviction of Bill Cosby, you may remember, there was this big debate among the entertainers in the U.S., as to whether you can separate the celebrity's body of work from their personal behaviour, whether that's appropriate. And I think to a degree we certainly can, but only after that behaviour's been addressed and dealt with appropriately. So with Michael Jackson, it may take a considerable period of time in some people's eyes for him to be rehabilitated. Even then, as you suggested a moment ago, his music may not be heard in quite the same way anymore. We may find ourselves constantly asking how much of of this particular output we're hearing was impacted by bad or, or criminal behaviour at the time. So, you know, we can separate the person's body of work from their behaviour over time, but uh, it does take time. Do you think we can, though? Because I don't think there's going to be a single individual now who'll be able to listen to an off-the-wall or thriller without, without feeling a bit uncomfortable that they're enjoying the work. Yeah, I agree. There'll always be that taint of the memory uh, even now, but certainly if more of these claims were to emerge, um, I think if the claims are judged to be consistent with other parts of that performer's behaviour or history, they'll never have the same credibility or standing again. It doesn't mean, though, that we don't acknowledge their giftedness, um, their talent. We just realise that, as I said before, talent <laughs> is no substitute for integrity and character. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Mal. Thank you for coming on this morning.